Okay, so let's imagine I was working on the search page of this website and I did something to the search um, block. And now for some reason on the home page, not on the search page, the search input has become this wide and the search uh, icon button has come to a new line in this area. But the live site, it looks like this. Now, when I do something on the search page, why would I search? Why would I check the home page to make sure I haven't broken something on the home page? <clears throat> that seems counterintuitive. By the same token, if, say, for example, I want the red background on this to be, uh, let's go with green. Well, we can look at the CSS here. The background is set to background color box BG color, <clears throat> which is itself set to our accent color, which in this website is, is red. If I come down here and I change accent color to be green, well, I've fixed what I wanted to fix on this. Now we've got a nice green background on this box here, but anywhere accent color was used, such as here, is now also green. But again, how would I remember to check these tiny details all across the website just because I wanted to change the background color on a color box? Or because I changed uh, the background color on the footer, why would that affect a background color maybe on the header? Or back to our original example, when I was working on something on a, on a search results page, why did that break my search box in the header? One thing we can do to get around this um, is use regression testing tools. So what we're going to do with, in this video is we are going to look at using Backstop um, to, to, to test our website that things have not changed when we change when, when we do some work on it, or if things have changed, the things that have changed are what we expected to change. So if I change this to, uh, we'll go back here again, back to green, that this changes to green, but this line here stays red the way it should, and this line here stays red the way it should, and we haven't broken other things. Um, I'm, actually, I'm not sure now why this has gone, gone to green, um, but that's, oh, it's because of this call out box content here. Okay, so that, that's another interesting, we, you know, we, we, we thought we fixed one thing, but we, we broke something, something else. How a regression testing tool works is that it takes a screenshot of the original site, so in this case, the live website, and then it takes a screenshot of our development site and it compares one to the other. And if there's an issue, it will show it up. So let's um, have, a, have a check here on how this works. So inside web, I create a directory called test slash backstop and we've got a package.json file here. This just includes backstop.js. Now the backstop.js uh, docs kind of suggest that you should do this globally. I like to do it locally so that if another developer is working on my website, they will have uh, these backstop tools as well, even if they don't have backstop um, installed locally or sorry, globally on, on, on their own com computers. Um, a couple of commands then that we, we, we need to run for backstop. The first one is called backstop reference. So backstop reference. What this does is it, it goes to, the, um, to the, the current live site and it takes photographs or images, uh, screenshots of, of the pages that we tell it to take screenshots of. We tell it to do that in this backstop.json file, and we'll go through this in, in, in a moment. If I run backstop reference from here, we're going to get an error, backstop not found. And this is because, as I said a moment ago, we didn't install backstop globally. So to get around this, what I've done is created a few um, npm commands, <clears throat> which will run the backstop commands, but run them from our local installation of backstop instead of uh, our global installation of it. So if we run from here, um, npm run backstop reference, what we'll see in backstop data here is it will create a new directory called backstop reference or reference files, um, bitmaps reference, and it puts a screenshot of each of these um, pages from our website in here. And then it will use these screenshots as the basis for comparing uh, this with what's, what, what, I've, what change I've made on my local development site. So if we run a second command then, npm uh, backstop uh, test, this will run the test. So we'll see another directory being created in here called uh, bitmaps test. So this has created a directory. It's got a date stamp on it and the time, the current time uh, now. And here's each of the images of our uh, uh, 
um, from our tests or our form and our homepage, things like that. Okay, when it's done that, it also creates a HTML report. So you can see that in here, index.html, and we can open a preview of this. So that's this uh, report here. Now it's a bit small here, we'll look at it in a, in a full browser. So that's this report here. So we can see two of our tests have passed and two of them have failed. So we look at the two that have passed and we can see that the phone screenshot and the desktop screenshot of our feedback form uh, have passed. So, so that means the reference file, that's the live site, and the test file, which is the my local version of the site, are identical. And we can see both of these are identical. However, four have failed. So the ones that have failed get a third image over here, which is a diff. So this is this is the two screenshots placed on top of each other with pink marking where things have changed. So let's have a quick look at um, this the home page here. So the image is gone from the home page. Now we we, we I, that's a parameter I set because I don't want to be told that the test has failed just because the editor maybe have changed the image that was on the home page, or if say there was a video there, and when I take a screenshot originally, one frame of the video is shown, and when we take the screenshot on the test side, a different frame is shown. We don't want to get errors like, like that. So instead we just leave these white spaces where an image had been. So this is the reference, this is the live site. This is the test site, this is my local version, and we can see there's a difference in that this uh, box here is wider on my uh, local version than it is on the um, uh, reference version actually doesn't have a border either and this um, search icon has moved down here under the, the search so if we look at this on the diff we can see here's the differences and if we can use this item here called a scrubber we can see on the left hand side the live site and on the right hand side uh, our local version so we can see on our local version the text has moved up from where it is on the live site and we can see on the live site uh, we've got a search icon here, whereas on our local version it's all the way over here and down at the bottom. Scrubber is handy then for looking at other parts of the website. So here, for example, there's an image over here, and we don't care what the image is. We we know there is an image, and it doesn't matter which one it is. But we've lots of pink here. If we use the scrubber, we can see on the live side it says, "Can you imagine a childhood without Christmas?" And on my version it says, "This is a fantastic opportunity for us to do something for the environment." So. <clears throat> On my version, I've got three lines of text here. On the live side, we've got two. So the error that we're seeing, although it, it is it is different, it's only because the content has changed. So we can we can ignore that, and we can look then through the different pages of the website. We can see also look there's a small error here on the mobile version of our um, uh, adult social care and health page. Looking at it on the desktop, if we turn on our scrubber, we can see everything looks identical except this. It's this. Um, not sorry. It's this box down here in the corner that's different. And we can see the only difference is that the content designers have changed the content that's in this um, this little region here. So again, we haven't changed anything, nothing, nothing has failed. What the actual issue here is that the database I'm using is a little older than the database of the live website. So if I if I updated my database, this should all be, be fine. So that's the backstop report that we get. That's our reference file, our test file, our differences and our our scrubber. Um, so how do we uh, use these? Let's have a look at the at the backstop.json file. So this is the main file. This is the one that defines all our different tests. So first off, we said that the viewports we want to use, so this is how many screenshots it, or it'll take of, of each uh, page of the website. We, we've one called phone and one called desktop. So take a picture of this screen when it's 320 pixels wide and take a picture of this page when it's 1200 pixels wide. We could add another one in here. Uh, we'll call it tablet maybe. And we can say, take a picture of this screen when it's um, 768 pixels wide and I don't know, 800 pixels high. I'm not sure the height one re really matters. Um, and then that will take an extra screenshot for us. And down here then we've got, this looks kind of long. Let me close this bit here for a second. This looks kind of long here, all the different parameters we can use for, for backstop. What we actually need to use, sorry, what we must use uh, for each what's called a scenario is three items. It must have a label, it must have the URL that we want to test, and it must have the reference URL of the correct version of the website. So if you look at that here on the adult social care and health and feedback form, we can see that. So I want to compare 
my local version of this page here with the live version of this page here and the same with the with the feedback form we can add any of the other parameters that are here into here as well or we can just leave them as, as defaults from, from the top so you can see just going through some of these the height selectors this is where we saw the white where there should be an image so um we saw well, let's see on the home page version here we've got these this big white space here whereas we've got an image here and we have an image here so that's because i said here hide selectors and hide image video iframe and picture so we, we don't particularly care what 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 image is being used all we all we want to know is that there is an image there now using the height selector means that it uses visibility uh hidden in css so the, the 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 width and the height of it still hold, so things don't collapse and it still has the sizes. You could use a remove selectors either, which would actually use display none and take it out of the DOM. You might use that for something like remove selectors, say dot uh, cookie um, cookie pop up. So you don't want the cookie pop up um, selector interfering with the rest of the uh, uh, if for, you know I don't know maybe. It, Maybe your cookie pop-up doesn't work locally, but it does work or isn't implemented locally, but is implemented on the live site. So this will allow you, okay, let's just ignore that item uh, altogether. We don't care about, about this, this thing. And then you've got other features then like hover selector. So it will it will imitate if something had been hovered over here, if something had been clicked. Um, I like the delay selector. Sometimes you might want to test um, what the screens, that the screens look correct when say uh, a newsletter pop-up shows. And that shows after someone's been on the page for four seconds. So you could say, put 5,000 in here. So 5,000 milliseconds or five seconds. That's when the screenshots get taken. So so it, it waits waits enough time for the newsletter um, pop-up to have, to have shown. That's a very handy one. Uh, also handy is um, the ready selector. So don't take the screenshot until this item here is loaded. So you might have one thing that takes a while to load uh, because it waits on everything else to come into the page first and then that loads so you can put that in here that when the cookie uh, pop-up has loaded that's when we take the screenshot rather than any specific delay um we've got a, a mismatch threshold so this is set to 0 0.1 so this can go from 0 0.01 to 100 percent so you can say you know i'll accept 50 percent uh, uh discrepancy if it's anything more than 50 percent change then mark it with the pink um it's good to have that pretty low so we, we we're, we're going to say that we want it you know basically any change whatsoever so this is if it's if there's 0.1 of a percent change mark it as, as as an issue after that then we just add in the different um pages that we want so we could add in in another page here if we if we had one um i'm not sure we'll say I don't even know if this page exists, but we'll we'll say if there was a contact. Actually, let's let's maybe go with a four hundred four page. So we'll just put in a page that we know doesn't exist. Um, so, so something like that, and and then it's now it's going to run an extra scan for this size as well, and it's going to run on an extra um, page. So let's have a look at that running. npm run backstop reference and then npm run backstop test okay so now we've got a we don't have a test done yet so the references will have updated and you can see now we've got phone and tablet and desktop um screenshots so there's the phone screenshot there's a tablet screenshot and here's a desktop screenshot and then our tests will have updated so now we've got a new test for 2023 uh, December 06 at 16.04 so these are these screenshots for us and the HTML report would have also updated now we'll be able to get to this HTML report by going to whatever our local domain is whatever dot local forward slash test forward slash backstop forward slash backstop underscore data forward slash HTML report forward slash index dot HTML and that's what we'll see over here when we refresh this page so we can see here we've got six passed six failed uh, we've got our phone um test here and this failed on these items we can see over here we've got our tablet test and this failed on these items here Remember we saw earlier on that the content um the content had changed between when i last got the database and when i'm running these tests 
and and so on really doesn't much mind going through all of those and we can see then which ones passed to our 404 page passed to our page page not found and also our um feedback form failed so that's very handy then we we, we can we can script reports and i would say if these don't pass uh, let us know and we can fix them and if they do pass well let it move to the next step of the the deployment process